Hello and welcome back to Pause for Prayer with just a couple of weeks to go before we finish for Easter. And of course we've also finished walking our special Lenten prayer devotion. we finished walking between the stations of the cross. Next week you're going to be sharing in your school Easter services and I'm very pleased to have been invited to prepare some materials for that. But therefore this week is the final week this term for some Pause for Prayer videos and we're going to look at two very special dates. Last week we looked at two sorts of parents. We thought about mothers on Mothering Sunday and fathers on St Joseph's Day, St Joseph being the foster father of the Lord. This week on Thursday it's the Feast of the Annunciation and that's not a word you might be very familiar with so I'm going to explain what it means and why it's important and why it's a very special day for Christians and for the Church. The Annunciation. Does that word remind you of any other words? I think it sounds a bit like the word announcement. Annunciation, announcement. And actually, that is what it means. The Annunciation was a special announcement. And can you think of a special announcement which took place in the Bible before Jesus was born? The Annunciation was the announcement made to Mary by the angel who told her that she was going to bear God's son. Now, perhaps it seems a bit confusing to be thinking about this part of the story when we're preparing to mark Christ's death and resurrection in Holy Week. Why are we going back now to the Christmas story? The reason why is that on the whole, human babies spend about nine months in their mother's tummies. And exactly nine months from Thursday will be Christmas Day. The Annunciation always falls on the 25th of March. And this year, the 25th of March is a Thursday. It always falls on the 25th of March because nine months after that is the 25th of December, and that is Christmas Day, when Christ was born. In past centuries in this country, the 25th of March was also New Year's Day. It wasn't the 1st of January because it seemed a good idea to begin a new year at the beginning of the Christian story. So there's nine months to wait until Christmas. Have you started writing your list? Now, it's always exciting when a family learns that they're going to have a baby. Perhaps some of you are able to remember when you were told that you were going to have a younger brother or sister. But this announcement, this Annunciation, was extra specially important because this was a moment which changed the world. The announcement that someone is expecting a baby means that in about nine months' time, there will be one new life in the world, or maybe more if there are twins, a new person. But the announcement that Jesus was going to be born meant that there was going to be new life for everyone, for all of us. Because if we then believed in Jesus, our human lives would no longer end in death, instead our lives would end in heaven, would end in the joy of being forever with God. So it's actually quite a good thing to celebrate close to Holy Week and to Good Friday, because it reminds us that when Jesus dies, that wasn't the end of the story. There was Easter Day still to come, Jesus' resurrection, his rising from the dead, and so it will be for all of us if we also believe in Jesus. We shall have our own eternal Easter day. But the Annunciation isn't just about Mary receiving the good news that she was going to have a baby. It's also about the response which she then made. Many centuries ago, a saint called St Bernard said that at the moment when the angel spoke to Mary, the whole of creation held its breath. The whole of creation was waiting, waiting for Mary's answer. Was she going to say yes to God? Because God doesn't always, uh, or God doesn't ever force us to follow him. God doesn't ever force us to cooperate in his plan. Mary could have said to the angel, I'm too frightened, or I'm too busy, or I'm not worthy to become the mother of God. Mary was frightened, but she knew that God would give her courage. And Mary was confused but she knew that she could completely trust in God. And so she said, yes. She said, behold, I'm the servant of the Lord. Let this happen to me according to what you have said. So the Annunciation is also about Mary's yes to Jesus, about Mary's agreement to God's amazing plan. And this is an important thought for all of us, because all of us also have to say yes to God. Now, God doesn't ask each one of us to have a baby, for one thing, half of us watching are, are boys, but God does have a part in his amazing plan for each one of us, and God waits for our answer to see whether we will say yes. The plan for each one of us looks different, but also has some bits which are the same. 
God may want us to help other people, or he may want us to teach other people all about him. God may want us, when we're grown up, to have our own families so that we can share with our children, with the next generation, all these his special stories about him. Or God may want us to serve in the family of the church in a special way, as a missionary, uh, as a leader, as a priest, as a nun. The plan is different for each one of us because each one of us is different. We're all different, but all of these different plans also have some bits which are the same. All of us, all of them require us to love one another, to love our neighbour, and all of them require us to love God. The Annunciation is really, really important because it shows us the start of the Christian story and it invites us to step up and play our part, to play our part in the ongoing unfolding of that same story, to play our part in making the announcement to everyone about God's good news. Now, I think I've told you before that at certain special times of the day, each day, the bells of St George's Church here ring. They ring at 8 o'clock in the morning, just before school is starting. They ring at midday, 12 noon, and they ring at 6 p.m. Listen out if you are passing. You'll hear the bells ringing at those times, ringing a special pattern. Three chimes of three, ring, 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 and then one chime of nine. The bells ring like this to remind people of the Annunciation, to encourage people to stop and to say a special prayer. A prayer which reminds us of the angel's message to Mary, of Mary's yes to being the mother of Jesus, and then of Jesus' saving work, which was able, because of that, to take place. So today I'm going to finish our session with the final part of that special prayer, which we say when the bells ring and which actually helps us to place the Annunciation within our current thinking all about Lent. Because the way in which we are to say yes to Jesus, the way in which we are to walk uh, his path and his plan for our lives, involves us not being afraid of difficulties or challenges. Such difficulties and challenges, which we all encounter from time to time, are, if you like, our own stations of the cross. They're a journey that we have to make through life, which has its ups and downs. But, just like Mary, there's no need for us to be frightened because God will be with us every single step of the way. So I'll say the prayer, and then we'll say together the Our Father. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you all for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again later in the week.